So what is architecture? So architecture is many things. It's the background for human action. So it's a spatial configuration of our environment and I think it's the environment at large. It's not just a building or a public space or a city. It's really everything um, at many different scales. And it's what enables human action. It's, it's like a background. Um, something visible and invisible at the same time, tangible and not tangible, there and unseen. Um, so I believe architecture is many things, many different things at the same time, so that's wh why and how it's difficult to, to define it. Um, it's not just a profession, it's not just um, service providing, for, for a client, for, for a city, for a developer. Um, it's not just something for the collective. It, it's not art. It's not uniquely art. It is art, but it's not just art. It's many, it's many things together. It's something that is at the intersection of these many things. And that's what makes it unique and also uh, difficult. It's also tailor-made, and at the same time it works with the economy. Um, all the economic structures have a very, very um, big impact on its production. The circumstances in where architecture is produced economically and politically are very, very important uh, towards the result. So it's not just about the talent of, a, of an architect or a group of architects, it's not just about the political willingfulness of a, of a city, of a state, of a, or of a private client to, uh, to do something. It's this many things together. And, and so there are so many parameters that, that what makes architecture so complex and so difficult, so challenging and so stimulating at the same time. In the end, I think it's, it's about creating space and it's about creating environment that allows things to happen that wouldn't allow, wouldn't happen the same way if that space wasn't there. So, um, Would you make a difference between something that is just a building and something that is architecture? What you mean that most of the buildings like built on, um, in the world are not, uh, we can't define them as architecture as they're, they're like just purely functional and, and sort of, think, yes. which is probably, it's, it's probably, it's probably True, yes, because uh, because those those buildings, most of the buildings that you can see built around, have no um, pretension. I would say pretension, perhaps, uh, is not the word, but you see, they 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 no ambition. They don't. Have, they just want to provide uh, a service, a shelter, a roof, uh, and that's all. So they don't take into account all those invisible layers that I was talking about. That I always like to. To quote, I always like to quote the phrase of Lina Bobardi, the Italian-born Brazilian architect, who was always talking about the subtle, subtle substances of architecture. So it's what you don't see that is more important than what you see. And of course, she built very bold buildings, very, you know, the Masp or the Sesc Pompeia are, are not invisible at all. The, like, rough, concrete and the very bold, uh, but at the same time she was taking into account this, this idea of the invisible matters, the matters that are not brick and mortar and concrete or steel, but um, these substances that are more, um, that are subtler, that's like air, um, the light, the art, the people, and, and, and that's what, what good architecture does, good architecture uh, does not always um, or only produce an image, a sort of an, an icon or a building that is purely functional or that is functionally it's being iconic. You know what I, what I mean? It, it always also produces something that will allow certain, will allow you know, action, human action to take place in a way that it's better um, than if the building wasn't there, if that building wasn't there, so that's what I... So this is already what architect can do? It can produce this space for... Yeah, I think it's what architects should do, it's what good architects can do. Then architects, you know, it's a, the, the, there's many ways of practicing architecture, there's many approaches, there's many... Um, and then there are good architects, bad architects, uh, average architects, there's a bit of everything. But yeah, I think that's what architecture should do, it should... Um, of course, provide shelter or, or build cities or plant cities um, 
within within the possibility of it and uh, and put together all these strengths and opportunities and forces and the economics the politics and so and so forth and also um, guide this sort of irrational unseen intangible desires that are behind the production of architecture and then in a very concrete way and in a very almost arts and craft and and, and, and way so to get to to a product that's that's why it's so complex because there's so many things together it's not just one thing and uh, what is your uh, architectural position well uh, you know I I was trained in, in Italy, then in Spain. I, I started working with Eric Miralles and then Jose Antonio La, Martinez La Peña and Elias Torres for many years. And, and that was um, end of the 90s, beginning of 2000. And, and in Spain at the time, we really the accent was, was on the praxis, on like doing good buildings. And we didn't think about theory that much, even though I also study architectural criticism in Spain again with that cat glass and then I went on I started on writing books about architecture as well. And then I set up my practice um, here in Paris but and more recently I've also started teaching with different institutions from Cornell to Columbia University or the Berlaga and the Berlaga in particular as a very, very strong theoretical um, position which is uh, which is really not seeing architecture as service providing but seeing as a way of um, changing the world really have a, have a positive impact in the world um, so you see in my practice there are all these things coming coming together then then there's, there's lots of inspirations there's lots of things that 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 feed the practice and the work as a designer um, but I wouldn't feel comfortable myself in saying well, um, you know, I do, I, I, I do theorizing my own work. I'd rather have critics. Um, I, I know there are the certain light motif, the certain things that keep on coming quite obsessively, uh, and I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm rather um, in the position of producing a body of work rather than uh, producing services for the industry. But. Um, but I'm more comfortable criticizing or giving seminar theory um, courses on, 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 on other issues rather than my own. I don't have that kind of distance from, from the work that makes it possible to say, well, I know, I, I know where the interests are, what the themes um, are that keep s sustaining the practice and keep uh, our interest in going, and, and it's perhaps the articulation of the different scales. Uh, it's uh, the intersection of different disciplines. So here in the office, we do from very large scale master planning. Um, one of the biggest one was the master plan for south of Geneva, 240 hectares, or more recently the master plan for the next 20 years of development of public spaces and under underground spaces at La Défense, the Paris Central Business District. From right now, I'm working on the design district in um, in Liverpool and on a research project with the ATH in Zurich and Singapore about mega cities. Um, it's so so it's this very big scale and from this big scale to the scale of an architectural object or an installation or even a book or an article and and with all these things together and we go from one scale to to the other. We work in collaboration with artists as well. Uh, quite quite a lot. Of course, this is not a, the most efficient way of working, but it's very enriching, and this is what defines our work, I think. Mom. And can you tell us something about your design method? Yes. Well, I have my own design methods, and then mm, the, the office is composed of three partners. So, uh, and 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 we also do collaboration. So the design methods varies. Um, depending on the project and on, on the on the scale of the project. Um, I must say that as far as I'm concerned, I never start with a form. I don't have a style. Uh, we don't have a style, I think. So um, it's really a situation, a precise situation, a response to the situation. The response is never uniquely pragmatic. It's never uniquely the response to that place, to those needs, um, to those functions that need to be addressed. Um, there are these themes that keep an interest that keep coming, such as framing, um, 
overlapping of layers, of different layers of perception, uh, atmospheres, uh, bringing inside this, this more subtle, the subtler substances I was talking about, um, and doing something that is very designed, very, very designed in its details uh, sometimes, but um, as, a, as a user of that architecture, you, you don't feel oppressed by that design. That's what is very important for me. And to do so, oh, when I start a project, I consider the place, I consider the program, um, and then there's many influences and references that come from other disciplines. There's, there's, there's a lot that comes from art, but also cinema, fashion, literature. Um, I start working with words. When we work together, we, we have workshops, um, sort of crash workshops, where we um, write down the concepts through words first. And then we go to tests, we go to a research phase, research of best practice, uh, contemporary but also uh, but also much farther in time. Uh, we can look at Mari, uh, for instance, the oldest cities when, it, when, when we're planning a new city um, or a new master plan for, for, for today. And, and, and we look at the words, at the visual references. We work a bit like a trendsetter, um, you know, those, those forecaster, fashion forecaster offices, picking images, picking references. It, but it's not just images, it's what the image does, what the project does. But you never have only architecture best practice in architect or examples or, or, or studying typologies. You, you will always have something from from art or from cinema, a way of framing something more conceptual. And then and then we, we start testing different forms, different volumes, if it's a building or if it's a city, different urban concepts. And then, then comes a phase that is kind of violent. Well, if you have the luxury, if you have the time to, to do so, of course, where you put those options into crisis, this one that usually resists, um, this one that is that will be the one, and that's. But it's true, you know. Sort of survives. the one that survives, right? That sometimes you don't have the. That sometimes you need to be much quicker, so those phases are compressed, um, and that what's happened. Lots, lots, lots of the time, you really in the profession of architecture, you, you, you really have. A, lots of the time is taken by administration and sort of politics and and, and so forth. So it's really important to keep that creative space. Um, alive and, and intense and to allow for that space to happen. It's very, very important, but it's not the easiest thing to do.